final project. And what I was going to do today is walk through this process for you. But before we start the actual painting, I want you to look at the sunflower. This is looking at it through the plate. If I turn it over, this is the back side. And this is the side that we paint. So when you're doing this, what you have to do is be very aware of the steps in how you painted this regular. For ex and you always start from what you did last to down what to, to what you did first. So our very last step when we do a sunflower is the highlight right here. Then we paint the donut. That, yes, I'm going from reverse. So the last thing we did, I, that, uh, let me just start over. We, we start from last to first. So last was the highlight. Then next was the donut, the, the second coat of the donut. Then we did the petals. And before the petals, we did a first time donut. So when I paint this on the plate and we'll walk through the steps, we'll start with what we did last as our first. And so that was the highlight. So let me just move that aside and we'll get started here. Now, this is my glass plate and I made a pattern. And the pattern I have put inside the plate or the side that we're gonna be eating the food off of. I really strongly recommend that you do a pattern and think about those steps that we talked about. You know, what we did, we what did we do last, going down to what we did first, and then the steps that you did that. And for example, I'll tell you when I was doing the samples for today's session. I was all I was always painting my I didn't have a pattern because I thought oh boy you know I can do a sunflower you know in my sleep I don't need a pattern so when I was painting on my plate I kept doing the highlight over here and then when I turned my plate over it was always on the wrong side you know I wanted the highlight here but it kept showing up on here and so I, you know, finally dawned on me, you know, okay, Nancy, you got to paint that on the other side. So that's why on this pattern, I have the highlight on this side of the plate. And this is the plate facing me. And then, so once I got that down, my second part was, okay, I got a highlight. I don't need a pattern to pounce the donut. So when I would do that, I would turn the plate around and my highlight would be off the donut. It would be, you know, um, once the the highlight would all, wouldn't be in this nice area of the top of the donut. It would always be down low or onto the edge or into the center of the donut hole. So it's like, okay, you know, I'll follow the rules. I'll make a pattern. So this is my pattern. And the first step we're going to do is the highlight. So I'm, I'll get my plate and I'm using multi-surface. No, I'm not. I'm not using multi-surface paint. I am using enamel paint. It's the folk art plaid enamels. But if you use multi-surface paint, I have one right over here. It's good for glass. It has that on the top right there. So if you don't have enamel, just use multi-surface. So I'm going to put a little yellow ochre. That's yellow ochre on my plate. Then I'm going to use my soft scruffy. Now, this is the old scruff, uh, enamel brushes with the light green handle. But there is newer fabric and glass brushes on the onestroke.com site that you might be interested in looking at. If you don't have that and you still want to paint on glass, you can. Just use your dark 
green or your professional versions of our normal one stroke brush, you just may not need to pounce as hard because it's a little more stiffer. So, okay, so here's my brush. I'm doing that highlight. And if you, now again, we gotta remember how did we do our highlight? We only put a little bit of yellow ochre on one corner of our brush. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Just I'm dipping just a little bit in my yellow ochre, tapping it on the pit on the side of my plate. Now I'm gonna just turn this to make it easier for me. You know, because I'm always used to making the highlight on the left. So I'm just gonna gently touch the, the um, corner of my scruffy and paint the highlight. And I'm staying on my pattern. That's like really important. And I forgot to mention to you, when you paint glass, be sure you clean it with rubbing alcohol. So this is just a huge bottle I have. So I, I had already done this for all of it, taking a, just a paper towel, put a bunch of rubbing alcohol on it and cleaned off my surface and then let it dry. Now with plates, it's really easy because you're never gonna like really touch this part because we're always gonna touch this edge or underneath. But if you should touch this area that you plan to paint on, be sure you clean it again with rubbing alcohol. Okay, so that's step one. Now to paint the donut, you really need to let this dry and it doesn't take that long, um, maybe 15 minutes to a half hour but do for every single step on reverse glass painting it really behooves you to let it really you know like really dry now i did some painting this morning for this for this class and it was mm, sort of tacky and it, and it worked just fine so i'm going to set this aside because i'm going to the next step Okay, so like, like I do when I have these demos that I have all these drying steps in between, I always paint another plate or surface with it already dry. So my highlight is already dry. So now I'm ready for my donut. Okay, when we do a donut in normal time, we paint the top first. You know, we scruffy our little arc up and over strokes, so, so to speak, up here. And then we come down and pounce our bottom. So what do we need to do for us today? We have to do this one first, the bottom, because that, that's the very next step before the highlight. Okay, so on my palette, I'm going to use, and today I picked just colors that I had in my supply, and I have burnt sienna. That's going to be my donut color. And then I have burnt umber. Again, all of these are just one stroke paints. And I can just wipe this off. It was just a little bit of yellow ochre. Now, don't forget when you're using enamel paints or multi-surface paints for glass, you do not want a wet brush. The wetness can uh, affect the paint to, from adhering to the surface. Now, when I paint the donut, I do like two thirds, almost three fourths of the lighter color and then just one fourth of the darker color because the darker color can just really take over the uh, painting. So I'm coming back. Now, another thing I did when I painted this, I used a lot of paint, probably more than I would have if I were painting it on canvas or wood. So I just have a lot of paint. And this is a softer brush. So when I scruffy, I'm not gonna scruffy as hard. And even if I did, it's a soft scruffy. So the paint's gonna stick with it, um, stick to the surface pretty good. Okay, now 
I found when I was painting this, if I started on the left and tried to go over to the highlight, sometimes I missed it. So what I did was, and I'm going to stand so I can see a little better. What I did was I made a mark like that's where I want to end. And this is then where I'm going to start. Angle a little bit. Now, just even that, you can see there's a not, not a lot of paint on the surface. So I'm coming back, getting more paint. Now I'm going to paint the bottom part of my donut. Like I said, we normally don't do this first, but we have to for this. Okay. Now I'm going to get more paint and paint the top part of the donut. Now I have to admit, um, when I kept painting this, I was not getting the black here or the dark burnt umber that I wanted right here. So what I did, because this is, I, I, and it's only because I think it's reverse, I wasn't able to do it very well. I pounced little darkness right there first. Now I'm coming back in more paint. Now I will pounce the top part of my donut. Uh, remember, our brushes are always 12 and 6, and um, we don't turn it. Okay, so there's my donut. The highlight is dry. So I, I, what I can do is I'm going to turn my plate over, and I'm going to peek at my project to see if my highlight is in a good position for me and if the donut looks okay. And in my case, I, I believe it does. So it's like I'm good to go. I'm going to just go ahead and put my pattern back and turn it over and let this dry. Here's my donut dry. And so what do we do? Oh, you know what I want to tell you too. Let me go back. I'm getting that the other one. When you pounce this, this is our this is our second pounce of the donut. And why do we second pounce for the donut? We're cleaning up the petal edges, plus we're making those little scruffy little lines, those little um I call them little scruffy lines. They're, they're the little pouncing marks we make on top of the petal. So make sure when you do this donut that you do those little uh, scruffy marks all the way around. And that's the, the scruffies. Do this. That's the little stip, stippling. That's the word I'm thinking of. Stippling all around our sunflower. Okay, so now I can put that away. Okay, so this is the donut. It's dry. And see how I have those little stippling marks there. Now, what do we do? We do the petals. So, and another thing that we want on our petals is those nice streaks. Well, I'm not going to be able to get streaks with this dry donut. So I'm going to pounce another donut so I can get the wet paint to make the streaks in the petals. One thing I wanted to show you though, before I do that, I want to look at it, and this is what you need to do too. When you look at it, see, it, it looks good. It doesn't look like we need to do a second coat of paint, but we do for the petals. Now, when I do this second coat, though, so I'm getting more paint on my brush. When I do the second coat, I do not want to mess up the, the stippling that I got around there. So I'm going to pounce just, uh, just next to them. Okay, and then I can cut. And these, I don't have to be exact on this anymore because I'm doing this only to have wetness along the edge to pull out my petals. I'm going to put my scruffy off to the side and I will add to my palette 
yellow ochre and I want to use a bright yellow. So what I had in my stash was yellow light. I only had a few colors. I had yellow light, lemon custard, and just a touch of school bus yellow. So I, I just picked yellow light for the petals. So I'll put that next. Okay. Now I can sit down again. And I tell you when I stand and sit, just so if you, just so you know that you don't have to always sit, you don't have to always stand. Okay. Now I am going to double load my three fourth inch flat. Now, like I said, I use a ton of paint. It is just gobbing off of this brush. Okay. So we start on the light brown side. So by the time we get back down here, our petals won't be all black. And remember, our these are going to be flat, one-stroke leaves. They're going to go straight out so we don't get a pinwheel. So I'm going to touch right there. And I'm touching. I'm turning and I'm coming right up to the point. Now I have with me my little rubber scraper. So when I, as soon as I make that pedal, if I, if I don't like the end, we can fix it. We can, we can scrape off the paint and get a nice little point. Or if I don't like something on the side, I can do two things. I can immediately restroke or take my rubber, um, um, I don't know what you call it. It's a, it's, it's just called a chisel, but I don't think that's the right name. It's just a rubber tip that I can scrape off the paint off the surface. Now, after I do that, then I go to a paper towel and just wipe it off for the next time. Okay, so see, I'm getting more paint a lot. Now I want to keep the yellow ochre on the same side of the brush so it was on the right side of the brush I'm going to continue doing that I overlap come straight out I'm just going to instead of picking it up I'm just going to leave it there so I can just wrap some and do that but can you see because I restroked I got some streaks in there and that's one of our nice things about our one stroke, I'm, I'm sorry, our sunflowers. We have the technique that allows us to have all those pretty colors come out. And actually, you know, I, I have the pattern here. Actually, at this point, you don't need it because now we're, you know, we know we got the donut. We're just going around and making our little sunflower leaves. Sunflower petals. I could tell this one got a little triangly, so I'm going to just restroke right away. I, do you see how much paint I have? I just got gobs. Hmm. Sort of then let me do this one again maybe try to fill up that hole there okay and I'll reach stroke this one okay but do you see that I can real quick just scrape that off it's gonna be a little harder because it was like the first one but it's not impossible so I just scrape 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 and it will all come off there and see how I'm, I'm wiping off my uh, tool to make sure there's no uh, dried paint on there okay okay here's what you got to do now it looks pretty good but does it look good on the other side so carefully turn it over and go ahead now like I said we can take our pattern off now because the the important thing was the um, donut. So I look at this and it's like, mm, I'm not really too happy. Like these were really nice, but these sort of got a little weird. So I'm putting my finger so I don't lose track. Because 
I'm telling you, whoops, I would sometimes get so confused on where I was. <laughs> I just, okay, but this size, I think it's because I went into the donut a little bit more than I really should. So I want to restroke these a little bit. And I can do it because they're still wet. So I'm just restroking and making these bigger. They look huge on this side, but they're really not because I started inside the donut. So now let me turn it around. See, now they're, um, I'll fix that one right there. But now they all look uh, uniform. So it's that one right there if I want to restroke. Right here. Okay. Put my brush down. And like I said, um, we we did that. So let's look at it and see if we're we're happy. Um, that's the one I scraped. I want to restroke that one a little bit better. Okay. So there we go. So doesn't that look like we painted it? like normal we did the petals the second bounce of the donut and then the highlight so that was that step so now let's let it dry and i'm just going to wipe off this paint i'm not sure i'm going to wash it yet because i want to see what what we do with the next step and uh, a dry plate at this point is when I can paint those green leaves. But I want to say, if you prefer not to have leaves, I made another plate <laughs> that we'll talk about after the leaves. These this petals are dry too. I'll show how to finish the back side of this one if you do not want leaves. But in this case, I'm de demoing with the leaves. On my palette, I again, these are just the colors I had. Thicket's though a good green to use. So I have Thicket. Now, I didn't have an enamel citrus green, and I felt fresh foliage was a little not, not right, so I, I didn't pull out fresh foliage. So what I'm going to do is do a slight mix of grass green and lemon custard so that's what i'm going to do but this is just me because of, of my supply of paint you use whatever two greens you would like to use i'm going back to my three fourths inch brush i can go ahead and i uh, use the brush I was. So what I'm going to do is dip in the yellow ochre side, I'm dipping into the thicket, and on the other side, I'm dipping into, um, what did I call that? Grass green. And I'm going back and forth. See, these were my only two greens, and that looked a little dark to me. That's why I then dipped into the lemon custard. And it turned out so, to me, so pretty. Grass green and lemon custard with the thicket on the other side was a real pretty color for a leaf. So I, I'll be leaving my palette handy where I'm just going to constantly dip. Here again, I'm doing a lot of paint. In fact, I think I need a little bit more just for this. So what I will do, because I wanted the leaves, in between each petal, yellow petal, I'm going to do an angled one stroke leaf. So the angle is going to be like this, and then I'm going to paint the, the, this, the leaf out this way. So I'm just inside the donut, and I'm touching, turning, lifting, and coming up to a point. Now, I then, and we can take this pattern off. We don't need it anymore. I, after every stroke, I almost turned it around to look. And 
See, on the other side, it looked like, wow, that's a big leaf. But look, it's a little on, on this side. So you can right away grab some more paint. Okay, some more yellow in there. And now I'm going to make another leaf, and I'm letting it come out farther like that. It's really, um, when you have to make a second stroke, sometimes you got to be a little careful for not um, getting a, I'm going to, for lack of a better word, messy. Like that's messy, so I'm going to clean it, but I want to look at it. I want to make sure that it came out as far as I want, and it did. So this is where I was saying you can fix your tips, the tips with this point. I'm going to just scrape this one little side right here. And then on the paper towel, wipe this off and then come right back like this. Make sure that it gets clean because see what happened It, the paint from the last wipe came on here. Now, when this works really well, but what I did when I was all done, I did come back very, very carefully with my rubbing alcohol and cleaned a lot of the edges. So let me get a lot of paint here. And I'll make my next one. And you know, uh, this other one, I think the reason why it, I had to do two coats was I pressed hard. You know, we're so used to pressing and pushing and turning. With enamel paint on glass or multi-surface paint on glass, and with these soft brushes, you do not want to press hard. It's a gentle stroke. And see, so here that one is there. So it's like, okay, I now got the, I got the feel. <laughs> I can now go around. So these are just angled one stroke leaves, big ones, because I want them, I want them to come past the petals. Yeah. And even if you're in a rush, don't clean it because it, it it will look awful and then you can't you can't fix it my brush is turning on me so i want i need to fix that or like i said you won't be able to once it dries so let me look again a little scruffy right there but i think it'll dry fine And I know a lot of you that have watched me or have taken lessons from me. You know, I always say everything is going to be fine. There's never really a disaster in our painting. And I'm just going around now. Softly doing these one stroke leaves. Even though I go softly, it, sometimes it doesn't get me a point. Let me look at that one. That's too pointy. So I'm going to just come back right away with more paint and restroke. Okay. Now let me look though. It's a little longer than the others. So if that's okay with you, leave it, but it's not okay with me right now. So I'm going to wipe it off. And I know I told you to be careful about touching this surface, but I'm, I'm done with, I'm, that was an area that didn't have paint and I knew I wasn't going to have paint on it. And as soon as I'm done, I'll probably clean these edges with uh, rubbing alcohol. So it, it was okay that I touched it. So I'm just coming back, coming around. Making these long, long one stroke leaves. 
get more um, yellow. And you don't have to do all, all leaves in every single petal. I just chose to. But it would be okay if you do, you know, like a couple on one side and one on the other side. Okay. So there is all of the leaves in between the petals. So let's turn it around and look at it. And I, yeah, I think it looks pretty nice. You know, like I said, there's a couple things here that I'll clean up with rubbing alcohol. Now at this point, I would say let it dry. But I have to make a true confession that this morning I did not let it dry and I made the second layer of leaves and it really worked okay. It got a little thick right here, but what I wanted to do, even though the people at the table won't see this unless they turn it over, uh, it doesn't look nice. It's, it's sort of messy looking. So what I did was to, to try to clean up that look. So if they saw this side, it was like they're looking at another flower, and truly they are. They're looking at the back of a sunflower. I painted angled one-stroke leaves smaller around those leaves. So that's what I can do now. And like I said, it worked without me waiting it for, waiting for it to dry. But I believe if you were painting this for your own setting or your for a customer, you might want to just let it dry. So, but I started here at the at the center. This was my center point, and I just made little one stroke leaves, angled, and I did it. You don't come up. You're just stopping. You're stopping at the green. So I just come around, making these uh, strokes. Going to get some more. I'm wiping wiping some of this paint off and starting fresh. I want nice fresh to get. In that light green that I had. Here we go. So I'm starting. My thicket corner is touching the center that I um, have established, and I'm just painting some angled one strip leaves out. And I'm going to do one more just to fix that angle up a little bit. That was a little, I'm going to redo that one too. Okay. So there, there you got it. So when that dries, you turn it around, it, you know, it's gorgeous. It's a nice plate for dinner or just snacks for desserts. Now, I did, like I said, I wanted to say, if you're one that doesn't want to do the leaves, this doesn't look bad, but it's not as neat as you could. So what I am proposing is get out your scruffy brush and then just restroke a donut. And then it's looking. it looks like they're looking at the sunflower from this side too. So I'm going into my browns. I don't, I'm sort of out of paint, but for just for this, for this demo, I'll just paint it. And so we can just paint it normal. There we go. You could even go the extra stroke or extra step and paint a little highlight. That's sort of cute. So that, that's cute too. You know, um, let me move the pattern. So you have a sunflower on this side and you have a sunflower on this side. That's, that's a cute idea too. Okay.